Hey guys, it's the Brad Lloyd and welcome to my channel all about HomeKit tech. Let's talk motion sensors. A motion sensor is exactly what it sounds like. It senses motion. And luckily for us HomeKit users, there are many options to choose from, but they're not all created equally. Today, I'm giving you everything you need to know about some of the motion sensors available so you can make a more informed decision when building out your smart home. First, let me clear something up. While similar, a motion sensor is not an occupancy sensor. It doesn't actually know if someone's in a particular room or not, it simply detects motion. An occupancy sensor, on the other hand, actually detects if someone is in a room, and the only HomeKit offering I'm aware of is from a company called Heom. They say their sensor sits in your doorway and counts entries and exits and uses over 66 data points to instantly detect you. Occupancy sensors do sound pretty great, but prices start at $190 US, and that's approximately $240 Canadian. That's for a single sensor. Personally, I would love to test this out for you one day. Luckily, motion sensors are an excellent alternative and they're much more affordable. The motion sensors that I'll be going over today range in price from $31 to $74 Canadian, with options with and without a hub. Adding motion sensors can really take your smart home to the next level. I've been using motion sensors for over two years, and they're great for turning lights on and off without having to flick a switch or ask Siri to set a scene. They're also great for a bathroom, especially when you have kids like mine who constantly forget to turn the lights off. And another great option is the laundry room. This can be especially useful when your hands are full. Just enter the room with your full basket of laundry, and like magic, the lights turn on. Finally, another common area, and one that I use as well, is to light up a stairwell. Motion sensors can be a pain though if they're not used properly. Stick around till the end of the video for some tips to avoid making some of the mistakes that I've made in the past. I hope they'll help you avoid hearing a scream from the bathroom because the lights turned off when your kids were in the shower. Or complaints from your family members who had the lights burst on to full brightness in the middle of the night. Okay, let's jump in. I have six motion sensors to review with you today. They advertise different field of view angles for detecting motion, but based on my experience, they all seem to have similar range. So unless you have a particularly wide area to cover, then any of these motion sensors will likely meet your needs. I also want to mention that most of these sensors I purchased on my own. In fact, only Akara provided me with their motion sensor free to try. As always, I will provide my unbiased opinion, though I do want to be fully transparent. Let's start things off with a motion sensor from one of my favorite companies, and that's the Lutron Caseta motion sensor. So the thing is, this actually isn't HomeKit compatible, which to be honest is kind of a bummer. I did ask Lutron about this, but they weren't able to provide any insight as to whether HomeKit support would be coming in the future or not. The reason I'm including this on my list is because while the motion sensor doesn't support HomeKit integration, Lutron Caseta switches do, and for many, including me, they are the go-to switch for HomeKit users. So if you're like me, a product like this could make some sense to try, but you should just be aware of some of the limitations since you won't be able to create automations in HomeKit or control non-Lutron Caseta switches or lights. You do have the ability to select the active hours that you want the motion sensor to detect and respond to motion, and you have the ability to select which Lutron Caseta switches to include. Assuming the lights are dimmable, you can even set the light level, but you can set light levels for different times of the day, which is something that I typically like to do. I ended up placing this in our laundry room, which worked out well because even though I have a dimmable switch, I typically only use it at 100% anyways. If you have a similar space, then this could be a good option. It connects to the Lutron bridge, which if you already have Lutron Caseta switches, then you already have the bridge and it responds quickly. There are three motion sensitivity levels, low, medium, and high, which is consistent with all of these motion sensors except the Onvis one. There are timeout options of 1, 5, 15, and 30 minutes, which are set from the sensor itself and not from the app. The sensor will turn off the lights if no motion occurs within the duration of that timeout period. There's also an auto off function, which can turn the lights off when motion isn't detected as opposed to turning them on. The form factor is nice, and I like that it comes with an option to angle it on the wall, and I think this could be really helpful for some. Lutron advertises a 180 degree field of view, and it uses a CR124A battery, which Lutron says should last 10 years, which is pretty amazing. I did find that there were some limitations with this sensor that don't match my particular needs. It's a decent option, but at $65 and with no HomeKit control, it's not at the top of my list. 
Next, let's talk about Eve Motion. This was the very first motion sensor that I ever owned, and I have three of these in my house in total. I'm a fan of Eve products, especially their thread accessories, though unfortunately, this one does not have thread. Yet, anyways. I actually released a video just last week with my top seven Eve products, and in that video, I mentioned Eve Motion as being one of the products that needs thread the most. I'll link that video in the comments if you wanna check that out later. Eve Motion currently costs $49.99 Canadian, but it doesn't require a hub, so it's a breeze to install. This connects using Bluetooth, which makes it slightly slower than some of the others that I'm discussing today. Eve advertises a two second response time, which I feel is accurate based on my experience. Because it's Bluetooth, you will need to make sure that you have a home hub like an Apple TV or HomePod in range. This motion sensor is the largest one in size that I'm reviewing today. It can be placed on a flat surface or mounted to the wall using a screw. It has a 120 degree viewing angle and takes two AA batteries, which in my experience lasts approximately a year and a half. You can adjust the timeout duration in the Eve app and because it's in HomeKit, you can use it to create whatever automations you want, such as having the lights turn on to a particular level at different points of the day. You can also set up push notifications, which could be useful if you were away from home, for example. What's special about Eve Motion is that this can be used indoors or outdoors. This is the only motion sensor out of the ones that I'm discussing today that can be used outside. It's IPX3 certified with an advertised operating temperature of minus 18 to plus 55 degrees Celsius. I personally haven't tried this outside, and where I live, it can occasionally get lower than minus 18 degrees Celsius on the coldest days, so this would be something good to try out this winter. Next is another Bluetooth-based motion sensor, and this one is by Onvis. It's actually Bluetooth 5.0, so said to be a little bit faster and more energy efficient than other versions of Bluetooth. In my experience though, all of these Bluetooth-based motion sensors have a pretty consistent response time of about two seconds. This is my newest motion sensor, so I haven't used it as long as some of the others, but so far it's worked well. Unfortunately, this sensor isn't available in Canada, at least right now, but it sells on Amazon.com for a very reasonable $24.99. You can't have this shipped to Canada, but you'll have to pay additional import fees, and of course there's that conversion to Canadian dollars. No additional hub is required, so you can save some money there. This one's a little smaller than Eve Motion and comes with an adhesive that you can stick to the wall in a more permanent position. What's cool about this motion sensor is that it also has a temperature and humidity sensor. There's no screen on here, but the information is available in HomeKit or by asking Siri, and historical data can be viewed in the Onvis app. The field of view is listed as 100 degrees from 7 meters away. This is a little less than some other available options, but not something I personally had any issues with. It uses two AAA batteries that Ombus claims should last 15,000 hours, which is close to two years. Worth noting though is that you can't adjust the sensitivity or the timeout period. Now let's talk about Akara. As of recording, this one retails for $36.99 Canadian, but it does require the Akara Hub. I'll link a previous video I did on Akara Hubs in the description. Akara accessories are generally pretty affordable, so if you're planning on adding a lot of sensors, then even with having to purchase a hub, you could still save some money going with Akara. The Akara sensor is the smallest of the sensors that I'm looking at today, and it can twist and turn for easy mounting options. This has a 170 degree field of view and it communicates using Zigbee, which is very fast. There's also a light sensor, but it's not exposed to HomeKit, so not really useful in my opinion. So while having a hub can be an added cost, the trade-off is the additional speed you get, which can be really important when it comes to sensors. Also, once you have a hub, then you can use it with the rest of a car's product lineup as well. This is HomeKit compatible, so you can use it with any of your HomeKit automations, but you can also use it from the Akara app for other things like triggering an alarm on the M1 and M1S hubs. The sensor takes a CR2450 battery that should last around two years. Like the Onvis sensor, the timeout isn't listed and can't be adjusted. Onto the Fabaro motion sensor, and this one definitely takes the prize for the most unique and fun design. It includes not only a motion sensor, but a temperature sensor, light sensor, and an accelerometer which is used for tamper protection. 
The design is said to mimic the eye of a cat, and by default, when motion is detected, it lights up to give some feedback, and the color of the light represents a different temperature range. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but it's definitely fun. Though I have to say that my kids find the design a little bit creepy if this was in their bedrooms at night. There's also a flashlight mode with brighter white light that can be customized in the app. Due to the design, it's not as stable on a flat surface, however, it can be mounted to the wall by screwing in the bracket. Similar to the Akara motion sensor, this can be easily adjusted up and down and left and right to provide the right viewing angle, which Fabaro doesn't actually disclose. They do say actual range of the sensor can be influenced by environmental conditions, but is up to seven meters. Its view angle is very wide. So what I like about this motion sensor is the light sensor. Instead of specifying nighttime active hours, such as sunset to sunrise, you can specify a light level. This is more accurate since factors such as cloud cover, windows, and the direction your room faces can all impact light levels. You can see the current light level in the home app measured in Lux, but you will need a third party app to set up a condition. This takes a CR123A battery that should last two years. The price of this motion sensor is currently $73.93 Canadian, so it is on the expensive side. Let's get into the last one in my favorite, the Philips Hue motion sensor, which includes a temperature and light sensor similar to Fabaro. This one does require the Hue bridge to connect, so if you don't have a bridge and you're not interested in investing in the Hue ecosystem, and I do mean investing because it's not cheap, then you'll want to consider one of the other options that I've discussed earlier. This motion sensor is priced at $49.98 Canadian and has a 100 degree field of view, which may not give you full coverage for a large area, so something to consider, though it hasn't been an issue in my experience. Like most Hue products, it uses Zigbee so it's fast, and it's powered by two AAA batteries. Most of my motion sensors I have in bathrooms, but my Hue motion sensor is in my open concept great room. I have an automation setup to turn my various lights on as sunset approaches, but often on cloudy days I prefer some light even in the middle of the day. I set up a cloudy scene and then programmed the motion sensor to turn this on when it detects motion below a set light level. I'll share more tips in just a minute, but here are some of the features and specs from the motion sensors that we've looked at today. I'll add the link to my website, thebradloyd.com, so you can have a closer look at this chart later. After reviewing all of these sensors, here are my overall thoughts. Because of the lower price, the speed of Zigbee, and the light sensor, the Hue motion sensor is my top pick. I do have to say, these are all great motion sensors for different reasons. It really just depends on your needs. If response time is the most important consideration, then I'd recommend going with Kara, Hue, or Lutron. But if a short two second delay is just fine and you don't want a hub, then Onvis, Fabaro, and Eve are all great options. Keep your eyes out for Thread to be added in the future. This will certainly improve the response time. Eve, as you know, has been working to add Thread to many of their products, and Onvis mentioned that they're planning on adding some Thread accessories by the end of the year, so who knows. Here are a few tips to consider when using a motion sensor. First, placement is key, and this may sound obvious, but it's not always as easy as it seems. These motion sensors don't all mount the same, so some may be more conducive to where you wanna set them up. It's important that they're positioned in a way that's angled appropriately to where you expect motion to be, but without getting any false positives. Most of these sensors are capable of high, medium, and low sensitivity, and I like to keep mine on high because when there is motion, I want it to be triggered. But these things are sensitive, and if you're not careful, then they'll go off just by walking by a room, for example. Also, if you have pets, then you may want to reduce the sensitivity. Sometimes you just need to play around with it to get it right. I suggest not permanently mounting until you've found a good home where you're happy with it. That's one of the reasons I like the Akara and Fabaro ones, since they can easily pivot to get the right angle even once mounted. Another tip is to use conditions in your automations to further personalize your setup. You'll need a third party app for this like the Eve app. My cloudy scene has been so useful and was fairly simple to set up using my Hue motion sensor. The condition I set means that action is only taken when my kitchen pendant lights are on. I also use conditions in my bathroom automation so action is only taken when my lights are off. This way, if I need to manually increase or decrease the brightness, HomeKit won't constantly change the light level 
pulls back once motion is detected. Okay, speaking of bathrooms, you don't want things to go dark in the middle of a shower. Chances are your motion sensor won't detect motion from the shower, so the easiest thing to do is to set a long enough duration before the lights turn off. In most cases, 30 minutes is probably long enough for most. This does mean that your lights may stay on unnecessarily long, but in my family, we typically still turn the switch off as we leave a room, and if we forget, at least we know that it'll time out after 30 minutes, as opposed to just staying on for hours. Assuming things like your morning showers often happen at a consistent time, then you can narrow the 30 minute turn off to specific times. Just be careful though, as off schedule showers could leave you in the dark. My last tip is to use time of day programming. If you have a light sensor like the Philips Hue or Fabaro motion sensor, then that helps, but even still, time of day automations can be really helpful. For example, my bathroom lights are set up like this. One hour before sunset to 9 p.m., my lights turn on to 100%. But then from 9 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. as I'm getting ready for bed, my lights turn on to just 50%. From 10.30 p.m. to sunrise, so my sleeping hours, my lights turn on to just 25%. You could also set this up as a shortcut to possibly simplify the process, but I personally found this to be very challenging to get it set up in a way that works, especially when I'm adding in the sunset and sunrise functionality, but certainly an option that you can play around with. If you have any tips or tricks for your favorite motion sensor, then leave it in the comments so we can all learn. I'll leave affiliate links in the description in case you decide you wanna pick up any of these motion sensors. I may receive a small commission that'll help to support the channel at no additional cost to you. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.